Okay, welcome good people. We are going to look at uh, the ATB level one, Introduction to Financial Accounting. And this is a December 2021 paper, specifically question three, it's a question on partnership. Now, go straight to the question. S&P are partners in retail business. The balances in their ledger account as of 30 June 2021 are as follows. So we have capital accounts for partners S&P, current accounts, drawings for the same partners, Trade receivables, return inwards, return outwards, carriage inwards, office expenses, insurance, bank balance, motor vehicles, that is the cost and the accumulated depreciation, same to fixtures, opening inventory, that figure, purchases, sales, discount allowed, discount received, office salaries, rent and salaries, salesman salaries, and commission received. So we have additional information, closing inventory, 16,544. Allowance for doubtful days is to be charged at the rate of 5% per annum. Then partnership uh, information here, we have interest on capital at 1% per annum. Annual salary, salary at 1280 for partner P. S&P to share profits. And then we have depreciations, reducing balance method for motor vehicle and furniture and fittings at 20% and 5% respectively. So what are we expected to do? Come up with the income statement showing the profit and loss and the profession account, partners' current accounts, and the statement of financial position for the year ended 30th June 2021. So we we'll go straight to the question. The best uh, point to start at is additional information. So let's just go through it very fast. Inventory. This is closing inventory. The first item. Inventory as a 30th June 2021. That is closing inventory. So we don't need to worry about it. It features in the trading account and the, uh, the, 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 the statement of financial position. I will show you how. And then an allowance of doubtful debts is to be charged at the rate of 5% per annum. For this one, we just uh, allowance for doubtful debts because this one affects the accounts receivable. Accounts receivable. So if we don't have it already, then you take 5% of accounts receivable. And that will be it. You simply debit the P and L account, and of course, it has the effect of reducing our data. So you can either reduce the data's value, accounts receivable value, or you can also show it as a as a current liability provision for uh, doubtful debts. Then, uh, of course, if uh, if we have already did, if we already had uh, provided for this. Then we look at it, we look at uh, whether it's an increase or a decrease. If it's a decrease, we'll credit the P&L account. If it's an increase, we'll debit the P&L account. So maybe it's uh, fair for us to confirm if we already have any figure here, uh, provision for bad and doubtful debts. And looks like we don't have, so that one will not be a big deal. It just create for it when the right time comes. Of course, these are all these partnership agreements. This will fit in the appropriation account. We'll capture that when we get there. Then depreciation, which will also capture when you get there. So, having gone through the additional information and we know what is what it entails, the best thing now is for us to start working on this question. So, we'll go straight to the solution. Solution. And under solution, we say S and P partnership. S and P partnership, and uh, this is our income statement. Income statement. That's what we are preparing uh, for the year ended. For the year ended. For the year ended. Uh, 30th, 30th, was it 30th, 30th June, 2021, like that. So then we need to create the columns and it's always good to restrict the zeros if the figures have already been restricted three columns are advisable three columns are advisable and we always start with the trading account and from the way this question is we already we have the trading account now the trading account only has two things sales and the cost of sales only those and the final product from the trading account is gross profit. So sales minus cost of sales, you get gross profit. That's all. So just check if sales has workings. And the common workings for sales is return inwards or sales returns. You've sold and the customers have decided 
one reason or the other to return the goods back to you. We call them return inwards or sales return. And we can see we have return inwards of 1904. So since we have uh, sales and return inwards of return inwards, we will not post this to the outermost column. We will now post this to the central column that will allow us to do the workings. This is a return inwards. The inner column helps you to do the working. That was 1904. So just less from there. 444, 444, 400 minus 1904. So that gives us 442, 442, 496, like that. So 442, 496, that is the sales. Then we go to cost of sales. And under cost of sales, we have the opening stock. So the opening stock, in most cases, will not have any working. So we go to opening stock and it's found in the power banners. You can see 1st July 2020. And uh, what we are working for is 1st uh, July 30 June 2021. So this is the opening stock. 15.616. So under cost of sales, we are supposed to get the cost of sales and push it to the outermost column. So the best way to do the cost of sales is in the middle column. Then the once we get the cost of sales, we we'll push the outermost column, and then we less from sales, and we have our gross profit. Now opening stock plus purchases. Purchases may come in with uh, its uh, workings. So let's just check. We have workings for purchases. You can see we have return inwards. We bought and we returned to the suppliers. We also have carriage inwards. This is a cost that is, that is incurred when you are transporting goods to your premises from the supplier's premises. We treat that as part of the cost. So carriage inwards, return outwards, all these are uh, workings that will come in with purchases. So our purchases is 244608. And since it has workings, it's preferable that we do to push it to the innermost column so 244608 and then we add carriage inwards and then we less return outwards like that that's how we go about it so carriage inwards is um, 5184 then return outwards 5440 so 5184 5184 and then 5040. So we less that from that, and what we get will be our our cost of sales. So this is 244608 plus 5184 minus 5040. That gives us 244752-244752. 244.752, then we less the closing stock, less the closing stock, and the closing stock will go back to the question. Closing stock from the question is uh, 16.544, so 16.544, I told you the cost of sales is 16544 simply opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock. So that's what we are supposed to do. So 15,616 plus 244,752 minus 16,544. Make sure you get the figures right. If you don't get the figures right, you will have started the journey on a wrong foot. So minus 442,496. This gives us 198,672. 198,672. I hope I'm right. Now I'm uh, all alone here. Gross profit. So I hope I'm right. So gross profit, 198,622. Then the next thing is to see if we have any uh, incomes and gains. So check if we, if we have incomes and gains. Incomes and gains. Go through the question. Go through the question any income and gain and i have seen there is a gain here discount received discount received there's also commission received and then check additional information if there's anything on those two items any workings there's nothing so we pick them as they are so discount received discount received should be on the credit side please don't pick this figure 
take this. This is the discount to save. This is discount allowed. Discount allowed is a loss to the business. So it's debit and again is credited. So discount received is 5,008. So we come here, discount received, discount received, 5,008. Since there are two, it's good to add at that point. Then we also have commission received, commission received, commission received. We have it here. This is 6736. 67.6. If it was just one, we we'll have added directly, but you can see there are two. So 5008 plus 67.6. These figures are quite tricky. Make sure you get them right. So this is 11.744. We are adding the incomes plus 198.672. What do we get? 210.416. So 210.416. That becomes the figure that we will now use going forward. So then we less what? The expenses and losses. Less expenses and losses. So what are the expenses and losses? Just go back to the question. Now we'll start from up, going downwards. And uh, any figure we get will be asking ourselves if there are any workings on it. So all this we are done. Office expenses, 10, 9, 28. Office expenses 10928. So there's nothing on additional information on office expenses. So we'll pick it at this as, as it is. 10928. Then we'll go pick the next one. Go pick the next one. Office expenses insurance 5360. Insurance 5360. So just picking the expenses. Insurance 5360. That insurance is an expense. And then uh, what else? What else? What else? Bank balance. This of course is an asset. Motor vehicle asset. Fixed and fittings asset. Inventory. No. The purchases. Sales. We are done with those ones. Discount allowed. These are loss. So we are going to pick it. Discount allowed at six sixteen. So we come here. Discount allowed at six sixteen. Discount allowed. 3616. Next. Office salaries 86976. Office salaries 86976. Office salaries 86976. 86976. 976. Like that. Uh -huh. So we are uh, the right course. 86976. Office salaries. Rent and rates 23,328. Rent and rates 23,328. Checking if we have any additional information on all those things we don't have. So rent and rates 23,328. Rent and rates 23,328. Rent and rates 23,328. 23,328. These figures are quite tricky. So you have to check to make sure that you are picking them the right way. 23, 328. Salesman salary is 54, 720. 54, 720. So salesman salaries. Salesman salaries. Sorry. Salaries. 54, 720. Next. So we are on good cost. These are good cost. Salesman salaries. We are done with that inventory. Now all allowance for doubtful debts to be charged at 5% of per annum allowance for doubtful debt so that is also it's a loss so we'll come here and create that allowance for bad and doubtful bad and doubtful debts doubtful debts five percent of uh five percent of who because this we are talking about debtors and debtors are trade receivables so we're simply talking about five percent this trade receivable so 5% of 23,760. That gives us 0 0.05 times 23,760. That gives us 1188. So 1188. Okay. So this is the figure that we'll have here. 1188. Like that. The next, go to... So 
sorry that's another one depreciation yeah depreciation so depreciation for motor vehicles and furniture and fittings so we come back depreciation sorry depreciation furniture and fittings so depreciation for motor vehicle and furniture and fittings furniture and fittings now this one you might want to choose to put them in the innermost column so motor vehicle 20 percent reducing balance how do we work out that 20 percent reducing balance so we come here motor vehicle check motor vehicle if it's reducing balance we are working with the written down value so for motor vehicle we'll be talking about 144,000 144,000 minus 56,640 and then whatever answer we get we get 20% of it so this will be 20% of 144,000 minus 56,640 that gives us 87,360 87,360 that gives us 87,360. So 87,360, 20% of 87,360 times 0.2, this gives us 17,472. This equals 17,472. So that is the depreciation for that. Then for furniture and fittings, it will be 5% of 36,000 minus 0.88. That is uh, that six thousand minus twenty eight eighty. That gives us that three one twenty times point zero five. This gives us sixteen fifty six. So sixteen fifty six. So these are the two figures. So depreciation for motor vehicle. This is depreciation for motor vehicle seventeen four seventy two. Seventeen four seventy two. 17,472 and then for depreciation for for furniture this is furniture depreciation depreciation furniture and then this is depreciation motor vehicle and then this is uh, provision for bad and doubtful debts so uh Provision for depreciation 5%, that is 1656. So we simply come back here and say 1656. So we add the two 1656 plus 17472. That gives us 19128. So 19128. Then we add all of them. If we don't have any, so just confirm that we don't have any that has been left unattended. Annual salary for partners that will come under their corporation account. I think we are good to go. But in case of anything, we will always come back. We will always come back and check. So let's just work with this. 10,928 plus 5,360 plus 3,616 plus 86,976. Plus 23, 328, plus 54, 720, plus 1188, plus 19, 128. That gives you 204, 244. So let's repeat again, just to be sure. 10, 928. Plus 5360 plus 3616 plus 86976 plus 23328. These figures are quite tricky. Plus 54720 plus 1188 plus 19, that gives us 205 to 44. I think that's what we got maybe the first time. So let's just go with that 205 to 44. 205 to 44. 
So we list this to 5, 2, 4, 4 because these are expenses. We list from that. So minus 2, 10, 4, 16. 2, 10, 4, 16. What we get is 51, 72. So 51, 72. Good. This becomes our net profit. This will become our net profit. Now uh, from the net profit, where do we go next? From the net profit, we go to the appropriation account. And the appropriation account is basically now by the partners how this amount will be utilized. So the first thing we go to is uh, interest on capital. This is now about the partners. The partnership agreement provides for the following. This is additional information. Interest on capital to be charged at the rate of 1% per annum. So this, we are paying the partners for allowing their capital to be used in the business. So it's us who are paying the partners. So interest on capital is simply 1%. Interest on capital to be charged at the rate of 1% per annum. So we'll take 1% of, uh, of S. 1% of S is, uh, how much is that? 1,280. And 1% 1 of P is 900. 60. So these are the interest on capital. Interest on capital on capital at the rate of 1%. So it's just 1% 1 of 128,000, you get one. And then 1% 1 of that 996,000 is 960. Good. So where are we? The next thing. So interest on capital, it means we'll pay these partners this amount. So we are going to deduct that. Uh, there anything else that we're supposed to okay so let's go straight to that anything that the partnership business is receiving from the partners because if you have anything that the partnership business is receiving from the partners we add back we add to the pro, the net profit before we can start distributing looks like we don't have especially if we have like an interest on drawings that is something we need to add back to, to add to the net profit before we can start distributing that amount and now that we don't have that interest on drawings, I can see drawings, but we don't have interest on drawings, so we leave it. We right away start distributing the amount. And the first point of distribution will be interest on capital. So we'll simply come here and say interest on capital. So it's the business that is paying the partners. So we have partner S, partner P, and we've said the partner S, uh, partner S is 12, eight, uh, and partner P is 960. And look at something here, 960. 960 like that, sorry. So this is uh, 1280. So 1280 plus 960, that gives us 2240. So this is a total of 2240 interest. And then, uh, of course, you have salary. And I saw salaries for partner P only. The figure was, uh, let's just check the figure from here. The figure was annual salary 1280 to partner P. So 1280. We pick it at that, like that, 1280. So annual salary 1280. That's it. Then uh, anything else on partners? That is profit and loss. That's the last thing. So there's nothing else. So we just get the totals here. Let's get the totals here. So what are the totals? The remaining amount is... Uh, what is this remaining amount? So 51.72 minus 22.40 minus... 1280 that gives us 1652 so we have here 1652 1652 and it's this 1652 basically the difference between 5170 and this the difference is 1652 so it's this 1652 that we are going to distribute among the partners 
and this is a profit and loss sharing and we have partner S and partner P, the ratio is 3 to 1. The ratio is 3 to 1, so it means this one will take 3 quarters, this one will take quarter, like that. If the ratio is 3 to 1, so 3 over 4, uh, that is 1652 divided by 4, times 3. What do we have? 1239. So this partner will take 1239, and this other one will take 1239 minus 1652. That gives us 430. So that's how it is. They have already shared the profits. You can see. So interest on capital, 1280960. Salary, 1280. And then profit loss. Profit is basically 1652, which is the balance. And they are going to share that in the ratio, 3 to 1. So partner S will take 3 over 4 of this figure, which is 1239. And partner P will take a quarter of this figure which is 413. A quarter uh, is the 1 over 4. So we have just interpreted the ratio 3 to 1. So that's how it's, it is. And we have already distributed the uh, net profit to the partners. That is the appropriation account. Appropriation starts from the net profit to basically showing how the uh, partners will utilize the amount. So let's go to the second part of the question. And again, as usual, we start with the heading. S&P partnership, don't get tired. S&P partnership, and then we say statement of financial position. Statement of financial position. Statement of financial position for the year ended. For the year ended. For the year ended. That we started June 20. One. So then, let's come here. As usual, we have shillings. We have shillings. And we have shillings. Then let's underline this. So then, uh, what do we have next? So what do we have next? We always start with the non-current assets. So non-current assets. Non-current assets. And then we have the book value here. This is book value. This is accumulated depreciation. And then this is the net book value. So that's how it is. Now, the non-current assets. Let's go back to the question. Pick the non-current assets. Have motor vehicle and furniture and fittings. So we come here. Motor vehicle. Motor vehicle, then furniture and fittings, furniture and fittings. So motor vehicle, the take the book value is the cost, the original cost of the motor vehicle. So it's one for four thousand and thirty six thousand. So those are the figures that we are going to pick here. One for four thousand and thirty six thousand. One forty four thousand and thirty six thousand. And then the accumulated depreciation, we have uh, accumulated depreciation will be, uh, it will going to be this 56,640, 56,640 plus the 17,472 for this year. This is for the previous years. This is the depreciation for this year. So 56,640 plus 17,472. That gives us 74,112. So 74,112. 74,112. And then for furniture and fittings, we'll have uh, the accumulated figure, which is uh, accumulated figure is 2880 plus 1656 for this year. So 2880 plus 1656, which is the figure for this year. So that is 4536. 4536. So 4536. So this uh, gives us 144,000 minus 74,112. 74, that gives us 69,888. And then 36,000 
minus 45.36. That gives us 31.464. So when you add the two, that is if we don't have any other than current assets. So plus 69888. We just check to confirm. This gives us 101.352. Then you go to current assets. But before you go to current assets, let's check to confirm if we don't have any other than current assets. And current assets are the assets that are meant to stay in the business for a long period of time. Yeah, we don't have any other. So for this, uh, for the for the current assets, we have trade receivables 23760. Yeah, trade receivables 23760. So trade. Receivables 23760. I'm putting this figure here. So let's have it here 23760. 23760. Then we list the provision. Provision for bad and doubtful debts. I think it was 1188. 1188. Whatever we get, we can. Uh, sorry, I think this is a mistake. Let's push it. Let's push the figures here 23760, then 1188. So that what we get is uh, we will push it to the inner, inner column. I think that one now is good enough for us. So 23760 plus. 1188 this gives us 24 948 24 24 948 and then we go to bank balance but i'll have to confirm this figure first provision for bad and doubtful debts i think it was a provision for bad and doubtful debts allowance for bad and doubtful yeah 1188 so i think we are on the right path so then let's continue picking these uh, current assets. Uh, so we are done with the trade receivables. Then we have uh, bank balance 72288. Bank balance 72288. So come here. Bank balance 72288. So you write 72288. So we go check if we have any other one. Prepayments, you know, those are some of the things that we expect here inventory, purchases, sales, discount. Yeah, there's nothing else. Now we have closing inventory. Let's pick the closing inventory 16544. Closing inventory 16544. Closing inventory is uh, an asset. Closing inventory. That is uh, the figure 16544. So there being no any other. Add plus seventy two two eighty eight plus sixteen five forty four and gives us one thirteen seven eight one thirteen seven eight one thirteen seven eighty. We'll have to uh, check the figures to make sure that they are uh, giving us actually the right things. So let's move to now. You can see the how my work is organized. So this is the total current assets. 113.78 is the total current assets. 101 is the total non-current assets. So we are going to current liabilities. Make sure that your work is very clean. Current liabilities. So we go back to the question, pick the current liabilities. These are the obligations that are supposed to be met within the shortest period of time. The obvious one is trade payables, and I'm trying to look for trade payables. We have trade payables or anything else. Accruals could make another one in the list. Accruals. It's like I'm not seeing anything. Allowance. We have already tackled the allowance for that bad and doubtful debts. We've already tackled the depreciation figures. Wow. So, does this mean that we don't have anything? Capital, current, drawings, trade receivables, original office. 
yes looks like we don't have anything so let's just go to the finance by section so it means that we are done when we add this what are we going to get So when you add this, we don't have any current liability. This is absurd. Okay. Now that we don't have, I'm not seeing any, but in case we see, we'll always come back. So this is uh this will give us how much? 101, 352 plus 113780. That gives us 215, 132. 215, I find it quite uh, intriguing that we don't have. Let me just check to be sure. It doesn't sound uh, it's not normal. Let me just be sure. Just to be sure that there is nothing. Maybe the only thing that we could have. Uh, Yeah, looks like the only thing we have here is uh, the allowance for bad and doubtful debts, and we've already captured it. Allowance for bad and doubtful debts, I think we have captured that. We've, we've deducted it from the trade receivables 23,760 minus 1188 to get 24. Wait a minute, 23 minus 11, is it 24? No, there must be a mistake there. This must be a mistake. 23. 760 minus 1188. This is 22,572. So the other option is just to leave it well, under current liabilities. We put provision for bad and doubtful debts, but let's just proceed since we already have it here. So this had even escaped our, we could definitely have gotten a wrong answer. So 22,572. Just make sure that you get these figures right because sometimes they can be quite stubborn. So 22,572 plus 72,288 plus 16,544. That gives us 111,404. 111,404 as opposed to what we had gotten. 111,404. So let's assume this is will be our the whole thing. Plus one or one. If it does a balance, then we'll be we'll pick it up from there. So two twelve seven fifty six. The good thing about this question is that it's supposed to balance. So this is the net capital employed. Net capital employed because we don't have the current liabilities. So our net capital employed will be two twelve seven fifty six. Then we say financed by financed by and under financed by now we have the capital capital and uh, from this question the capital is s s capital is uh, s capital is 128000 p's capital is 96000 so s capital is 128000 s capital p so s is 128000 p is 96000 good so when we add these two for the capital we get in fact capital capital since this question doesn't have even the long term debts let's just work with it from here so 128 plus 96 that gives us 224 so this is 224 thousand that is capital then we go to current account current account and we also have s p so current account have we worked on the current account in fact we made a very serious mistake here we just came straight from a and went to c instead of going through b b partners current account so that means that we simply need to prepare a partners current account partners current account normally current accounts will encompass all these things that uh, that uh, uh, all their workings 
that have been captured by the partners in the course of that year. So this is how our partners' current account looks like. Like that. So you just come up with one very fast. Like that. Like that. And like that. And then we do that. This is S, this is P, this is partner S, this is partner P. Then we say partner's current accounts. Partner's current accounts. Then you have credit and then you have debit side like that. So this and then we normally start with the balance carried down. So the balance brought forward. Balance brought forward. So balance brought forward from the previous. And those are the figures that we're going to get from here. Balance brought forward, we have uh, 70, 40, and 40, 64. 70, 40, and 40, 64. So 70, 40, and 40, 64. And then now, anything that increases their wealth in the business, we with credit. Anything that reduces, we debit. So, with that information, we have interest on capital. Interest on capital, who is, to pay, who is paying who? It is the business that is uh, paying them for allowing their capital to be used in the business. So interest on capital, it's the business that is paying them. So if the business is paying them, it means their wealth is increasing. So we have interest on capital here. Anything that increases their wealth, we credit. So interest on capital and the figures are just up here. So this is 1280 for partner S and 960 for partner P. Then we have a salary, of course, and this is for partner P only at 12.8. I'm getting the figures right here, 12.8. And then we also have profit and loss sharing. This guy's shared profits. So profit share, partner S got 12.39 and partner P got 413. So that's how we go about it. And then, of course, we had uh, drawings. Drawings, 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 drawings. They got some money out of the business, and that has the effect of reducing on their share capital, the investment. So S eighty three twenty P nineteen two hundred. S eighty three twenty P nineteen two hundred. So S eighty three twenty P nineteen two hundred, and these are drawings. So drawings account for the partners. So then, once we are done with that, we close the books. We don't have any other thing. We close the books. We close the books, and that's how we close the books. That's how we close the books. That's how we close the books. So that's how we close the books. Sorry, getting this line. That's how we close the book. So we get the side with the highest figures. That will be our balancing figure. Like for partner P, you can already see 19,200 is the highest figure. So 19,200. That means the balancing figure for him will be balance carried down. This will be 4064. I'm now adding the, 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 the credit side of partner P. 4064 plus 960. Plus twelve eight plus four thirteen. That gives us sixty seven seventeen minus nineteen two hundred. That gives us twelve four eighty three. Twelve four eighty three. And then for partner S, check the side with the highest figure, credit side and the debit side. I can clearly see the credit side has the highest figure. So we have seventy forty. 7040 plus 1280 plus 1239. This gives us 9559. So 9559, 9559. So the balance carried down for him will be, will be on the debit side. So 9559 minus 8320. This gives us 1239. So 1239 like that. So when you come to the current accounts for partner S. This is a twelve thirty nine. It's a debit balance for partner for partner partner P. It's a credit balance of twelve four eighty three. So 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 twelve four eighty three
So we come here and say, what this means, just the interpretation of it, is that uh, partner P has actually taken more. He has withdrawn more than what he has in the, in the business. The credit side is supposed to be greater than the debit side for partners to have to show that they actually they, to be in good books. Credit side is supposed to be higher than the debit side, but you can see the debit side for partner P is higher than the credit side. So let's get this. So for partner S, we have 1239. 1239. And for partner P, we have 12,000. 483. He has overdrawn his account. So that's how it will be. So this gives us 1239 plus rather minus 12483. That gives us 11244. 11244. That is negative. And then uh, do you have anything left? Let's get. We've already factored in the profits, remember? Because all profits are distributed to the partners. We factored in the drawings. We factored everything. So there's nothing left. So it's just getting the total here. This total should be able to balance with the, first, the initial amount we got. So 224,000 minus 11,244. That gives us 212,756. 212,756. And wow. So these figures are balanced. And so we are done. So net capital employed. 212,756. So it's balancing. And that uh, marks the end of this question. This question should take you approximately 30 questions in an exam setup. So that's how you go about doing this question. 30 minutes should be enough for you to do this question. And we are now done. So let's meet in the next question. Where we'll be discussing something else. Thank you so much. Subscribe and share.